right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Sarah Dioria. I'm the Client Relations Manager for Hardesty Crest and Emory, which is the sponsor of the American Heart Association's Young, at Heart, Young Professionals Group. Um, I'm also the proud chair of this dynamic and in inspiring group of young leaders. Um, you know, we're thrilled to welcome you to this uh, first executive breakfast series. And we're looking forward to an exciting discussion with our keynote speaker, Rachel McCrone. Thank you for joining us, Rachel. Uh, we hope to be uh, able to offer this series in person in the future, but you know, for now, we appreciate you joining us virtually this morning. And uh, you know, before we get started, I just wanted to welcome you all to Young at Heart. Uh, a little background, you know, in uh, 2019, Heart of Seacrest at Emory uh, collaborated with the American uh, Heart Association to create this group of young professionals to support um, the mission behind the American Heart Association. And this is through healthy lifestyle initiatives, building awareness for both social and professional development, um, and, and things like that. And through Young at Heart, uh, our members get a front row seat to you know, all the work that's getting done by the American Heart Association in our community. And you get to pave the way for more young professionals to get involved funding research, advocating for policy change, healthier lifestyle, working with school districts on free access to healthy food, tons of really, really great initiatives like that. Um, and, you know, they also get to volunteer and network and, you know, basically lead the cause. So there's a lot of young professionals in, um, or young professional groups across Western New York. And, you know, we see uh, heart disease and stroke continue to be uh, the leading cause of death in our community and we really feel like this is, this is the time um, for this generation you know to step into the spotlight so again thank you for for joining us um, in the past year we've built a robust uh, board compromised of other young professionals from organizations like lolly rich products part of secrets and every uh, and, and others just to name a few um, you know, and we've welcomed countless new members from across Western New York to join this group. So if after this presentation, you're interested in learning more, please feel free to reach out um, to any one of us and we'll be happy to tell you. Uh, we're, we're very excited for the future of Young at Heart and uh, I'm, I'm hoping that you can possibly join us and, and help us continue our work with the American Heart Association um, to build healthier lives in our community. So with that, I'm pleased to introduce Aaron Titchener, our moderator for today's discussion, as well as a proud heart survivor and member of Young at Heart. So, Aaron. Thank you, Sarah. And you got my last name right, so good job. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. And we're all very excited for this, uh, this, this kickoff, and we appreciate you taking the time to be with us this morning. A um, couple of quick things. The way today is going to work is if you have a question for Rachel, as she's talking, please utilize the chat box. Um, we will get to as many questions or comments, whatever you have. We'll get to as many of those as we can. Um, I think I speak for Rachel when I say the more comments, the more questions you have, the, the better this will be and she'll be happy to answer anything, uh, any questions you may have. So with that, um, I'm excited to introduce Rachel McCrone. Rachel received her, her bachelor's degree in marketing and international business from Drexel University. After college, she moved back home to Buffalo, started work at Fisher Price, and then moved over to Rich Products, where she is currently the senior customer marketing manager. And she works closely with our product marketing teams, our sales teams, as well as customers. On, on top of that, in 2014, Rachel started a new challenge as the co-owner of Revolution Indoor Cycling and Strength, which is a boutique fitness facility in downtown Buffalo. Um, Rachel has been married to her husband, Sean, for almost seven years, and she has two kids, Ava, who is four, and Graham, who is two. Um, in, in her free time, what limited free time I'm sure she has, Rachel likes doing anything outdoors, hiking, gardening, and she loves to travel to warm places. So with that, Rachel, thank you for joining us and I will turn it over to you. Awesome. <clears throat> thank you, Sarah and Aaron for, for the introduction. And thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be the first keynote speaker for the group um, and to share my story with you. I have quite, quite a long story in many, in many different directions here. So I'm gonna walk you guys through um, you know, uh, a couple 
um, very important things and, and series of events here in my career, um, kind of really what helped me, what helped me through it and how I started uh, Revolution. So as Aaron mentioned, if you guys have questions throughout, um, please feel free to ask them in the chat box. Uh, he, he did say the more questions, probably the better, which is, which is very true. I'm, I'm totally fine to kind of stop where I am and, and answer what questions you might have. Um, and super excited to hear more about the, the Young at Heart group. I mean, what a, what a fantastic way to get people involved and, um, <clears throat> you know, really get, get young, young people, young leaders throughout the community involved in such a great, great cause. So I'll start by um, just kind of walking through my, my background, my education, my career at Riches, and then my path on how I started uh, Revolution. So as Aaron mentioned, I, I um, attended Sacred Heart here locally, actually for high school. And then from there, I went to Drexel University in Philadelphia, where I got my bachelor's in marketing and international business. Um, from there, I, I moved back home. I started a career with Fisher Price, which is actually very similar to what I do today at Riches. Um, you know, customer marketing um, really intertwined with our sales group, um, our product marketers, and really working on a path of how we launch products to customers and consumers. So really interesting. I've always had a knack for um, marketing and selling. So that it really kind of fuels my passion, you know, in my day-to-day and -day my eight to five role at Riches and then also uh, with Revolution. Um, so when I moved home, I was teaching at a couple local studios here throughout the Buffalo area. Um, <clears throat> one of my biggest things was having control over the experience of clients who came in the door. And I never had that. The only control that I had was literally when my client got on the bike, when they met me in the back room for a workout, um, <clears throat> I controlled right the music and the experience that they had and, and how they felt after. Um, but never had full experience and control over how they felt when they walked in the door. So obviously, you know, I was doing that. Um, I actually taught in Philadelphia at a couple uh, gyms locally there. And then when I moved home, I kind of followed that, that passion here. Um, so that's kind of where, where revolution started. I, I felt super passionate about really just wanting to share that passion with others, wanting to make sure that people felt like they had a way to kind of disconnect and, and get some of that stress out. Um, but also wanted to control that full experience for them. I, I, I really feel passionate that um, the experience starts when you walk in the door. So <clears throat> that kind of sets you up for how am I going to feel for the rest of this workout? And what am I going to bring home with me? Right? So you'll hear me talk a couple of times this morning about a little bit around mindfulness, a little bit around, you know, exercising and, and that kind of um, fuel that you get when you're done and how that makes you a better person, right? Whether you're spreading those vibes into your community, whether you're bringing them home to be a better, um, you know, son, daughter, wife, husband, mom, dad, whatever that might be. So that was kind of our, our you know, one of our biggest things in starting the business is how we control that kind of first step um, when you walk through the door. So um, <clears throat> again, you know, that that's kind of how, how Rev started. Um, so so I had this grand idea of like, I'm going to do this. I think I can definitely do this. I'm going to do this on my own. Um, I think, right. I had like a little bit, my mom was a, um, my mom was a very um, prevalent businesswoman who I just shared my idea with. And I thought, this sounds like a really good idea. Right. And she was like, it, definitely. But um, like, how are you going to do that and work a full-time job on your, on your own, right? Let alone, like, I didn't, I, you know, didn't have my children then or anything like that. So I'm like, oh, geez, you're right. Like, I'm thinking here, I'm going to run a business with, I'm just going to teach three days a week and I'm going to teach from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., right? Like, I want to be absolutely exhausted. So I talked to one of actually my childhood best friends who I went to Sacred Heart with. Um, Amanda Myers, who's our second co-owner, and she, um, I think some of you actually on the call know her very well too. She um, was, you know, CPA by trade. She had all the financial brains of um, what I wanted to do, but also was a fellow, you know, fitness junkie. 
So she would come and take my classes all the time throughout the area. And, and we just kind of got to talk and I was like, Hey, do you want to go, you know, let's go grab, grab a drink. I have this idea I want to talk to you about. So I kind of walked her through what, what I thought was, you know, the plan that I wanted to do. And she was, and I was like, I'm, I'm interested, you know, what, do you want to go in with me? Do you want to kind of think about the financials of this? Do we want to really outline what this is going to look like? And she's like, absolutely, let's do it. So as we kind of walked through that, we decided, you know, we probably needed to bring somebody else on in terms of um, teaching, right, just managing the business. So that's where our third co-founder, co um, Colleen Kirk, which I know many of you on the call know as well, um, came into play. So Colleen, I actually worked with at Fisher Price. She is a copywriter by trade, a fantastic, any like marketing material, any of our emails that you see, um, <clears throat> she is the, the brains behind that. So really a, a wonderful kind of trio that, that we built. And I just shared with them, you know, what I, what I thought I wanted for the business, um, what we would build it on. And again, a lot of that is, um, community. I, I, you know, I'm not sure if any of you have seen, but our, our tagline is mind body community. So again, we think about like controlling that experience from the time you walk in the door, how your body feels right before, during, and after that class. Um, how you take care of your body and how you treat it for longevity, you know, to minimize heart disease, to minimize cancer, to minimize all these things that, that we're hearing about in the world. Um, and then community, right? How do we, how do we give back to our community? How do we, we call it sweat it forward, which I'll talk about in a little bit here, but um, those really important elements of, you know, kind of all, hitting all the layers of what we hope to be a successful business. Um, <clears throat> so, we talked to Colleen, I kind of shared with her what, you know, that rough outline that we had of just the three of us teaching, um, you know, kind of some rough financials that Amanda and I put together and she was in. So we decided, you know, we were going to do a, a um, open an LLC and we were each going to have 33.3% ownership in it. And um, we, we started down this path, long path of what do we need to do next? So a lot of that was around, um, <clears throat> you know, meeting with um, lots of mentors. So I'll talk a little bit about mentors too, but um, from riches, right, to kind of get a, a standpoint of, hey, this is kind of something that we're thinking about. Um, what do you think, right? Can, can, can we manage the time? Um, and, I, and I have to say my, my riches mentors were, were some of the best. They um, firmly believe that you, you know, follow your passion. And uh, if you truly believe in something, you, you kind of find the time to, to make it work and make it work right and, and manage your time, right? One of my best mentors at, at Rich has actually shared with me, owning, owning and operating a small business will have so many translations to what you do in your day-to-day -day role at Rich's or, you know, any company that, um, you, you know, you, are so valuable that, um, you know, you just, you really see the, that translation. And I can, I can definitely say that it um, has helped me both ways, right? What I learn at Riches certainly helps me in, in the day-to-day -day management of the business. And what I've learned from starting a small business and, and looking at, you know, P&Ls and all of that has certainly helped me um, in my day-to-day -day role um, at, at Riches. So, you know, we, we kind of went through that process. We, we tagged a lot of people, you know, m and Small Business School. We, we sat down with them and we said, um, hey, you know, this is what we're thinking. And um, what do you think, right? We went back and forth on all of our plans. You know, I can't even count, probably literally like 90 times. It was that um, crazy. And, and, you know, we were scared. It was like, I don't know, are, are people going to follow us? You know, we, yes, we have a great following at, you know, around the city, but okay, like they're, they're comfortable. And what are they, are, are they going to, are they going to come with us when we say, Hey, you know, we're, we're opening the, this own space. And, you know, we had, we had rent and we had all these fixed costs that uh, we, we needed to have a handful of people in these classes to, to really make this work. And, you know, even just um, hopefully break even at some point that first year. So we did a lot, a lot of, of research and, um, you know, we, we met with people throughout Buffalo, um, you know, financial people, um, riches, mentors, um, you know, our families. Um, Amanda's dad owns Moses Insurance, so he was a really great mentor for us. Um, my mom, as I mentioned, you know, ran a successful business locally. She was a great mentor for us. Um, <clears throat> you know, just really kind of 
figuring out who, who we needed to talk to and, and sharing our story with them to just get some ground level, like, yep, this makes sense. And it's not just the three of us on like a, a pipe dream here. Um, one of the other most important things is, you know, we actually used our competition as, as mentors too, you know, shared with them. We were open and honest with them about kind of what we were doing and, and what we plan to do. Um, one of our biggest things, which I'll, I'll talk about uh, also is kind of, um, we don't necessarily think of competition as competition. It's more of a kind of collaboration and how we, you know, there's enough to go around. So how we really work together to, to give our community what they need. So that was really a, a key driver in what we did too. Um, so from there, we kind of, you know, we, we worked with M&T very closely and, and built that business plan. Um, and we found a, a first, actually my husband and I, we found a first little carriage house. If any of you remember, Carly, I know you're on the call and I know you remember that first, that first carriage house that uh, we, we operated in at uh, 1109 Delaware Ave. So it was actually right behind the Boyd Mansion. Um, very small, right? We started with uh, 15 bikes and 10 TRX straps and everything was in the same room. And Colleen, Amanda and I were the three instructors. We did it all, we cleaned. Well, sometimes our husbands cleaned. We um, worked the front desk, we brought the towels home. There was no washer and dryer. So we brought, we literally were lugging towels home every night to clean them. And we back down at the studio at quarter to five every morning with the new towels before class started. Um, and we were all, we were teaching every single class. So we had 30 classes on the schedule. We were each teaching 10 classes a week. And that was that for the first year. And then we started to think like, holy cow, we we're kind of like blown up right now. Like we, our classes are waitlisted. Like people are mad because they can't get in. Um, what, what are we going to do next? Right? So it was either, it was a, it was a like very pivotal time. It just so happened that there was some issues with um, the foundation of our, our carriage house that we were in. And literally by carriage house, it was, a, it was like a three car old garage. I mean, it was so cute and, and perfect. But if you, if you know what we're in right now, it was literally like when I say the starting point of like something so wonderful, it really is. And, and it just shows that, you know, when you're really passionate about something, things kind of fall into place. But so, the, the foundation, we had some issues with the foundation there and um, our landlord came to us and said, hey, uh, you know, you're probably going to need to shut down for a little bit while we, while we figure this out. And we're like, whoa, 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 what, what do you mean? Like, we have classes tomorrow, we have classes next week, like we can't just shut down while we figure this out. Um, and again, we think like we were just riding high. It was like, whoa, we finally got this, like people are here, we're at full capacity, like thinking about that next move, what are we going to do? So we threw a couple ideas around, right? We're like, do we find another location? Do we just, you know, talk to the landlord and figure out how we get out of this lease because this is happening and find a, find a different spot? <clears throat> so indeed, we, we had to close the studio while they figured this out with um, the city. And we took, it was July 4th weekend, I'll never forget. And we took all of our TRX straps to Delaware, uh, to Hoyt Lake, actually. So we said, you know what, guys? It went from TRX to TRX right now, and we're just going to teach these classes out on Hoyt Lake um, and figure out, you know, what we're doing. So we met in the backyard, you know, literally for for two weeks straight. I'm like, okay, seriously, what what are we going to do right now, and how are we going to make this work? So major pivot, and I'll talk pivot, you know, between riches and and uh, rev a lot over the next 20 minutes here, but. Um, major pivot. We used and, and reached out to all of our mentors once again. One of our best mentors who I didn't mention in the beginning, actually, um, John Hurley, who, you know, is the president over at Canisius College. Um, just the most like genuine, wonderful human that we've ever met and so passionate about what we were doing and definitely wanted to help us. So we reached out to him and I just said, hey, is there any chance that we can use um, I'm drawing a blank on the, the name of the facility over there, but um, it's right on Main Street. It's literally right across the street from, from where Rev is. So can we use that to bring our bikes outside and, and do a workout, right? Can we use the track to potentially just put our bikes out there and, and do some workouts? Like our people are, are signed up for class. Like we're not canceling class. So he was like, let me, let me do a little bit of like research. Let me get back to you. So then comes 1716 Main Street, which we're in right now. 
and and John had reached back out and said, hey, we have this like empty building, right? We used to use it for an art gallery. I don't know, like we haven't been in there in a while. You can absolutely go down and see what it looks like. So my husband and I went down, <clears throat> we took a walk through and I'm like, this is perfect. This is like literally where I could see us being for the future. It's big, you know, we only need a small portion of it because we have 15 bikes and 10 to your straps. So while we got 1716 where we are today up and running for just a, you know, we were on a month to month lease. It was like at any point in time here, they can tell us like, okay, we need this building back or we're going to utilize it again for an, for an art facility or whatever. Um, it was also up for sale. So he was like, at any point, right, somebody can come in here and say, I'm going to buy this and I'm going to turn this into apartments, whatever. So we were like, you know what, we're willing to take the, we're willing to take the chance. And at some point here, we kept saying to ourselves, like, it's either going to work out or we're going to say, hey, you know what, we, we did this and we tried it and that's what we can say, right? So <clears throat> uh, my husband and I, you know, we, we took the tour and we were like, yep, let's rock and roll. Let's, you know, let us know what the rent is. We're going, we're going to keep hosting these classes outside until we figure out what we need to do. Now, the biggest piece of all this too is, and I talk about, you know, just community and mentors, um, we're actually our clients. We had hundreds of clients reaching out to us, like, tell us what you need. Can we help you? Can we come down and, you know, fix the foundation? Can we come down and help you move the bikes? Can we come down and help you paint this 1716 Main Street where you're like just popping up shop in this random place? Like that is the true the, the true definition to me of like just such a loyal following and the best clients I think in, in, you know, the industry that we could ever ask for. So that was just like, so eye opening of like, wow, these people like, okay, we're doing the right thing. You know, it was like kind of like that confirmation of we, we got this, we got to keep, we got to keep going. Rachel, if I could jump in real quick, there's a couple yeah. of questions. Um, oh, great. One, one was around the mentors and you mentioned those a couple of times and I, th I think the question really is, how can you expand a little more on that relationship or relationships? You mentioned John Hurley and how you, you got to a point where you were comfortable sharing these, these details and the inner knowledge and how you built those relationships to get to that point where you, you really felt comfortable to, to go to yeah. these people. Yeah, so John Hurley was an interesting one because he was, he was one of my um, <clears throat> longstanding clients from from the past. So we always kind of, um, you know, connected in, in class and just kind of asked, you know, we, we shared similar things. He was going to a, a, you know, Park City and Utah ski trip and I was going there the following week. So exchanging emails of, you know, hey, where did you go to eat? And, and can you give me some details on stuff like that? Um, but again, it takes like, um, in a weird way, like getting out of your comfort zone, right? And, I, and I'm going to talk about mentors in, in just a little bit here on like, even at Riches, you know, um, one of my biggest mentors at Riches is a senior vice president of, of marketing. And when I first started, I was like, oh my gosh, like he's, you know, like so high up, right? Like I'm super uncomfortable. He's going to be like, who is it? You know, uh, what, what do you really want to talk about? And like super busy, right? So it's almost like getting out of your comfort zone a little bit and feeling confident to say, hey, I just want to pick your brain or, hey, I'm, I'm thinking about, right, X, Y, and Z, knowing that you've had, um, you know, longevity in the business or, a, you know, a obviously successful career, what are your thoughts, right? And so that's what I've done kind of personally and professionally in a sense of, you know, the John Hurleys, the, um, you know, Nick Sambula's at, at Riches, um, um, you know, Maureen Lynch, finding people who really, um, you can connect with, but also um, feel feel comfortable. It's uncomfortable, right, at first, until you kind of build that relationship. But you feel comfortable enough with yourself to say, "Here's kind of what I'm what I'm stuck with, or struggling with, or just need your advice on." And it's crazy because I feel like um, as soon as you do that, those like really good people and really good mentors are like, "Absolutely, look, here's what I think, right? Here's how I can help. Here's." Um, Here's what I, I can share with you to maybe help help that decision. So I let think, me ask this then. You say getting out of your comfort zone. What advice would you give to people? Because let's, from personal experience, that's a hard thing to do to get out of your comfort zone. So how were you able to do that and kind of push the boundaries a little bit? Yeah, I think it's just really, um, you know, 
a little bit of research, I think, you know, feeling confident, <laughs> comfortable, right, with, with on what you're going in with. You, you know, you certainly don't want to waste somebody's time. And I always think about that, right? Like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, I hope I'm not wasting this person's time. But if it's, if it's meaningful and relevant to you and you're passionate about it, and you come through with that, you know, as you're talking to this person or as you're questioning um, what you should do, I feel like if it's genuine, they feel that, you know what I mean? And, the, and they actually want to, to help you um, in return, right? So I think it's just being, you know, genuine, really feeling passionate about what you're doing and, and just not having any, um, you know, ulterior motive. It's basically like, no, no, this, sure. is, this is what I, what I want to know and what I need your help with. Um, I think that's probably the best, the best advice, Erin. Good, good. Thanks for the questions. I love it. Um, so, so yeah, so we, you know, we were at 1716, we built this place out. Um, it's what you know today, but then it wasn't, it was just, you know, the 15 bikes all kind of lined up and, um, we had one of our, our friends come in and build a steel frame to hang the TRX on again, not knowing if we were going to be there, you know, for, for how long. Um, so from there, we decided, holy cow, this is, you know, blown up. Um, we decided to keep, keep going with it. You know, we talked to, to John about, could we perhaps get a, um, you know, a longer lease here? He was like, nope, the building's up for sale. Like, you know, we talked about this. I'm like, you're right. Yep. Got it. So during that time, um, the building got sold and our landlord to date was like, this is great. You know, I, I love what you girls are doing. I love what you're putting out into the community. He's actually a, um, a, a doctor at Roswell and he's just one of the, you know, most wonderful people. Um, and he was like, I think it's fantastic, right? You're, you have a mission to serve the community on, you know, ways to make them healthier and better. And I'm, I'm totally for it. So we signed a five-year lease, um, with him and <clears throat> started to, to talk to him a little bit about a build out, right? So it was like, okay, we're, we're at capacity now. So again, pivot, what are we going to do? We either, right, continue to just operate at capacity and you know, that's what we do. Or we decided to take like a little bit of a jump here to get to the next level and invest and you know, build this place out to what we want it to be. So that's where it comes back to that experience again. We, we, as we went through this build out plan, we, we talked, you know, I, I can't even count the number of times um, where we talked about what do our clients enjoy doing, right? What are they doing before they get here, after they get here? What do they leave here and go do? So when we, when we thought about this build out, we talked about that full client experience, right? They're coming in, um, to get a workout in, they, they go home to shower, they meet their friends at brunch, they're going down the street to squeeze to get a smoothie. So we said, okay, 100% we need locker rooms, right? We need, we need men's and women's locker rooms, we need showers, and we need a smoothie bar. We need somewhere that people can come and kind of hang out and, and you know, get a smoothie and, and take a walk with their friends, get a smoothie and, and go home and chill with their friends, whatever they wanna do. So that's exactly what we did. We, um, you know, I guess you can say interviewed a few um, smoothie companies throughout the area and decided to actually go with um, the Healthy Scratch, which the Pagulas own. So we, you know, met with them and said, this, you're kind of aligned with our, you know, our values and what we see in the community and you have great, great product. So um, <clears throat> went through this whole build out just about 18 months ago. Um, and, you know, really then again, I, I talk about pivots, but then it was also a time where we said, you know, is this the right thing to do? It's a, it's a, you know, large investment. Um, we decided, you know, we did so many calculations on, okay, we can have two classes at once now because we built out the, uh, the upstairs and the downstairs. So we could actually host two classes at once, one spin, one strength upstairs. So we could have double the amount of, of clients in and out of the door. And again, we, we're giving them a reason to come, right? If you're coming from Hamburg, if you're coming from East Aurora, like we have showers now and we have things for you. You don't have to drive all the way home to feel like, you know, you, you have to go home and shower to get to work or, or whatever that might be. And we were kind of missing that whole, that whole um, clientele. So um, <clears throat> that's kind of the, the build out plan. And then it was great, right? Now we had it. It was like, we, we got this, we got, showers, we got people in and out of here. We have, we went from three, you know, Colleen, Amanda and I to 23 instructors, front desk staff, um, 
you know, um, a maintenance team for, for the bikes and all of this. Um, it was wonderful. We were like, we were riding high. We were, um, we just, you know, we, we decided it was time for new bikes. So about six months ago, horrible timing, we got new bikes and then COVID hit. We were like, all right, wow. We, we just met with a construction company to do another build out of, um, chairs and, you know, tables to make it feel like people can, can come and hang out and yep, you got your smoothie, but like you were still leaving. So we're like, how do we make sure that people feel like they can come and, and stay? So we like just built out all those plans and then they're like, hey, by the way, um, March 13th, you, you gotta shut it all down. So we're like, all right, now remember that word we talked about pivot. It was like, okay, we're like riches, literally, right? Complete pivot on strategy, complete pivot on um, plans, right? We had a plan and I was like, hold on, I'm, I told Aaron in the beginning of this, like, I can be spontaneous, but if you let me know, I need to be spontaneous, like, next Thursday, right, at five o'clock. So it's like, okay, I'm total type A, I'm a planner. That's the best part of also being part of a large company and also running a business with two other people because you, you kind of, like, level set with each other, right? If one's on, like, a tailspin in a bad way, the other two are kind of like, look at, we got it, um, right? And the, it's like daily, we, we kind of reverse those roles. Um, same thing with riches, you know, being part of a large company and, and feeling, you know, so secure with the company that you're with to um, be able to say, hey, like, we got this, we're going to figure it out. Um, and it was such a good feeling that, you know, both places that I work, it, we had that mentality. So um, with riches, it was more of a, you know, we, we're pivoting, we're, we need to kind of come up with a reemergence plan. We maybe moved a little bit more from, you um, our components business, which is more, um, you know, things that they're making back of house to more fully finished, which is consumer facing, right? You, you go in the store and you pick it off the shelf. Um, so that was kind of our, our pivot strategy with riches. Again, you know, very different from, from what we were focused on. We had plans in place and consumer campaigns that were ready to launch and everything was on hold. Um, <clears throat> again, you know, under wonderful leadership at riches, um, everything has actually reemerged and in, in a sense, um, better. Um, which is crazy because I feel like when, when you first start this, it's like, you know, holy cow, what is this going to be? Like everybody's working from home and it's just a total, total pivot. Um, but in the long run, I think it's, you know, kind of op eye opening on, on how quickly a, a large company can change and be flexible and just so adapt to what's going on. Um, <clears throat> well, that's a good, a good opportunity. I'm going to pivot and take off what you've been saying and ask this. So, you have Rev, which is doing amazing. You work at Riches, and I, I know your job is very stressful, and you have, I believe, three or four people report to you. You have two kids, all of this. How do you, we're all kind of around the same age on this call, young professionals. How do you find the balance between everything? And because to me, it seems like you're constantly going. Where do you find the, the Rachel time or the time for your family with everything going on, because I think that's just as important. It is, and that's one of my one of my key pieces that that I'm going to end with too, Aaron. Is just oh, around okay. mindfulness. <laughs> no, but it's good, and I'm going to talk about it now too, because um, those of you who know me know I can just like talk for hours. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna just switch just a little bit there to the mindfulness piece of it, Aaron. Um, you bring up a fantastic point. I think it's one of the the biggest. Um, you know, something that needs to be constant in your life, but is so hard to find. And I think, um, you know, I talk about this a lot when I, when I talk to people about the business and stuff, it's literally, you, you have to find the time. You know, I talk to new moms about it all the time. It's like, how on earth do you find time to, for yourself, um, you know, for either one of, right, your, your work, your, your jobs, for your family, to work out for yourself, but it's literally like carving out and being really mindful about, if it's 15 minutes and that's all I have, that's all I have. And you know what? It, it's that time that I say, I'm going to either sit here and, and read a book. I'm going to sit here and, you know, do a 15 minute workout. I'm going to sit here and spend time with, you know, my, my daughter and son and, and work through some homework now that we're like my four-year-olds, you know, <laughs> I guess homeschooling. Um, right. So it's, it's being really super mindful about you. And it's as, as crazy as this world is and as quickly as things change and, you know, in the midst of all of this, right, I had two children. Um, so it's like, again, just, just 
being able to adapt and being able to really be true to yourself to say, I need this time because it makes me a better whatever, right? Associate, wife, mom, daughter, friend. Um, th that's the biggest piece that I, and I, and I say it out loud and I remind myself because it's, it's, I have to constantly remind myself, you know, I talk about it all the time and people ask me questions about it all the time, but, um, it, it's super hard. It's not like an easy thing. And it's like, you know, especially if you're, if you're, you know, a, more of a selfless person, it's like you, you, you're always on the back burner, right? Your, your health, your, your mindset. Um, and, and that's not okay either. And I always tell people that, you know, you need to make sure that you carve out that, that time and, um, just make sure that that's important, important to you. Um, and I think that was the biggest thing for me. You know, if I didn't, if I didn't consciously and actively do that, um, I probably wouldn't be where I am today because it, it makes you feel, um, like down and, and kind of negative and like, oh, I never have time to, you know, to do what I want to do or, or for myself or to get that workout and to maintain my health because you're worried about everything else going on or taking care of others, which is just as important, right? But if you're not taking care of yourself, you can't be the best, I feel like, at anything that you try to do with others um, because you're just, you know, you, you don't feel well, you're not, you're not happy. Um, so that's been like the biggest, the biggest thing for me. You know, I went from you know, working at a gym and, and training people and, and have literally my life was, you know, in a gym and, and for half my time and half my time in an office. And then, you know, you throw kids into it and a husband and, and this, right. COVID. Um, and you're like, Whoa, like things I, so it's almost like just being flexible and fluid and like, I have to change, I have to pivot, I, but I still have my time. And whether it's 15 minutes or whether it's two hours, it's your time to do what you, what you want with it and to kind of like clear your head and, and get back to, to what you need. Great. And I will go back. Another question that was sent to me, and I apologize, I didn't get to it earlier, mm -hmm. says revolution is killing it right now with the virtual and on-demand classes. A lot of businesses right now are having to rethink their business and marketing strategy. What's been the one takeaway from you as a business owner that maybe has not only helped you now, but also in the future as, as you've gone through the last, these last five or six months. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, <clears throat> you know, pivoting, we talked about it, but I think <laughs> really able to, um, to adapt and be flexible. I think, um, we, we've had so many plans, right. At, at riches at, at rev, um, in life. Right. And it's like, Th those plans are good if everything goes the way that you think they're going to go, um, which, you know, happens probably, I don't know, 1% of the time in life. <laughs> right. Um, so it's really and truly just being able to kind of uh, adapt and be flexible. Um, I I'm saying truthfully that like 2020 is the year of pivot, like that's the word. And, you know, if you're not, and, and not everybody's comfortable with that and that's okay, but it's just like allowing yourself to be able to say, um, I'm, I'm just going to roll with this. I'm not going to get, you know, stressed about it. Sure. But, um, right. This is what it is. And like, it's almost like just accepting that and being able to say, okay, that wasn't our plan, but, but what's our plan? You know, right now we're in plan like E, um, <laughs> right. I think that's like the biggest thing. And even from when we first started, you know, what, if you looked at my business plan, what I first wrote out from where we are today, I mean, it's like, you know, drastically different. So it's like just being okay with, with change and being flexible and being able to adapt, I think is the biggest, biggest piece. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And you're right. So, so, you know, we are doing, you know, virtual workouts and, and we have a really exciting news coming. Um, I think we're going <laughs> to tomorrow, but um, you know, we're, you're not going to announce it here exclusively for us. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but keep an eye out because I think it's coming tomorrow, but we're working on um, some plans for um, to take our bikes, you know, uh, outside and, and be able to host some classes. So again, you know, going back to those kind of mentors and community um, partnerships, you know, which, which we do a lot of, and I talked a little bit about the Sweat It Forward in, in the beginning and, you know, Ride for Roswell, Kevin Guesthouse, American Heart Association, um, Grassroots Gardens, right? And, and I know there's a couple clients on the call as well, but um, people love it. It's like, how do we sweat it forward? And so we do a workout and then we go out and do something for the community, right? Maybe it's a building up garden beds at, at the local schools. It's um, cooking dinner for, for people who 
are staying at Kevin Guest's house and going through a really horrible time. It's, um, you know, Cycle Nation maybe, and, you know, hosting, um, you know, being a, a studio host for that event with the American Heart Association. I mean, there's so many things that we try to say, this is how we want you to make sure that, um, you know, you're, you're taking care of yourself, you're, we're helping our community, we're, we're giving that knowledge back out to the community. Um, you know, there's so many people who, ju who just want to be educated on how do I take care of myself and, and how do I get involved, right? It's like those type of conversations and those type of events too that we really try to, try to help out with, um, which, you know, American Heart Association obviously helps us with and, and does a great job. But um, it all kind of goes back to that, you know, um, partnerships, um, spreading, you know, that, that kind of vibe out into the community and, and hoping that it's, you know, reciprocated. Um, mentors and um, the mindfulness piece, I feel like is a really big, um, you know, a really big, big way. And I think that's my biggest message for you guys today is just um, not to forget that, you know, I think we all lead such, such busy lives and um, amidst a crisis in, in the world that's going on, um, make sure that you're prioritizing your, you know, yourself and your health through, through all of it. It's just so easy to forget. And I said, you know, I, I repeat it to myself daily because it's so easy to forget. Um, even when you're in that business and sometimes even easier, um, to just remember that. Um, <clears throat> we do have a couple more yeah. questions coming in. Yes. Perfect. Good. Um, yeah. I was going to say that was a lot of just talking from me. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, so as we all kind of continue to grow in our careers here and, you know, further our careers, our education, our networking, try to move forward, um, I think we are we are all looking for new ways to adapt or to pivot to to use your your key word there. What was the biggest thing you focused on in the beginning of your career, Rachel, that you think really helped you get to where you are now, whether that's with Rev or with Riches or a combination, a combination of both? Yeah, great, great question, Aaron. Um, I think, you know, with Riches, it was certainly um, being open to taking on you know, we, at Riches, we like to call them stretch assignments, um, right? So kind of broadening my, um, my background, my responsibilities, um, being, being, you know, willing, I guess, to take on new challenges really helped me. It kind of identified for me um, where, my, where my gaps were, you know, where my weaknesses were and maybe what I, what I felt like I needed to work on, which again, those mentors come into place because for me, my, my biggest gaps are like, you know, financial and operational which are like key to running a business. So that's <laughs> how I choose some of those mentors too, right? Um, I just don't think that way. I'm more of like a sales and marketing, right? I know how to look at a P&L and whatever, but I feel like that really helped me um, kind of get to where I am today and, and asking hard questions, you know, um, not being afraid to kind of speak up and say, whoa, time out. Like, I, I don't understand what we're doing here or like, I need some more detail. And then also like, you know, doing some work and research on, on my own of, you know, I, I didn't understand anything in this meeting that people were talking about. I'm going to go back and kind of like get some, some of my own um, information and then, and then ask the questions. Um, I think same, same with Rev, you know, it was um, again, that kind of flexibility of taking on new things, being willing to just jump in. Right. We, we went back and forth so many times. I'm like, is this the right thing to do? Like, oh my gosh, do we just, are, should we just like say we're good now? And we did this, right? Like we talked about, or do we just say, nope, we're going to do it. And, you know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Um, and I feel like that translates, you know, really well to kind of growing in your career or, you know, growing a small business or just growing personally. Do you have, and I'm going to put you on the spot here a little bit. Mm -hmm. Do you have maybe one, I, I don't want to say negative story for us, but we see where you are today. And I think sometimes people think, oh, it, look where she is, look where she's gotten and don't fully understand the journey. Do you have any examples of maybe an instance where, all right, things didn't go exactly as planned or maybe your career at Riches didn't go in the path you thought it would or Rev took a turn left when you thought it would go right. And yeah. with that example, how did you, how did you adapt or or how did you pivot? I'm just going to keep using your word. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely, Aaron. So I think I talked a little bit on the rev side with, mm -hmm. um, 
right the pivot when our landlord came to us and said sure like okay right and that's literally when we said to ourselves like this is it like it's been a great 12 months how sad right it's been 12 <laughs> months and like this is like right something that we thought we would be doing until i'm like i don't know 70. um so that was kind of the the turning point for rev that was like okay like this is a hard left right now and how are we going to get back on like some sort of straight maybe still to the left but straight um, and I know I walked through that a little bit. I think for riches, um, riches, um, yeah, we, you know, there's been a couple things. Um, when I started, um, <clears throat> I was in a, you know, customer marketing role then and was dead set on, I wanted to go into product marketing. Um, Hi. I did a stretch assignment. I, I, you know, worked with one of our, um, fully finished plans and then I decided, okay, that's, you know, not what I wanted to do, but that was kind of like what I was set on. You know what I mean? I had talked to my mentors about it. It was like, yep, you know, this could be your next role if you do really well in the stretch assignment. Um, and that's what, you know, what you're passionate about. And then I decided I didn't want to do that. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, am I totally shooting myself in the foot here? You know, I kind of built this up with my mentors. I've talked to all of these product marketers about it. I was dead set on like, that's what I wanted to do. And then I realized that it just wasn't, um, I wasn't necessarily like good at it. I was, I was better at kind of um, selling that product out into my sales team, out into our customers and putting together that like consumer story. And that's really where I found my passion. So I kept thinking to myself, oh my gosh, you know, I, I, this is all I've been talking to people about. And now I'm going to go back and tell them that I, that's not what I want to do. Um, right. I went through interviews for it. Like it was almost a point where I was like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? Um, so I think that was probably a time. And then again, it, it kind of turned around and it was like, it, that's okay, right? I talked to my mentors again after, like, I'm so embarrassed. I, I went through all this and, you know, I feel like I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot because I don't, I don't have that product side and that background now, you know, for future positions at Riches. And that's what we always talk about at Riches too, is being a really well-rounded, right? Having multiple spots of, of um business experience to, to get to a leader or a senior leader or whatever that might be. Um, but you know, I feel like it, it, as you're kind of more open and honest about it, people get that and they're like, right, it, it, that's okay. You, you kind of went through the process, you figured out it's not what you want to do. So you kind of figure out that next thing or maybe that next stretch assignment, right? In finance or operations for me. Um, so I can understand more of that business. It's not like, you know, kind of a one size fits all or, um, this is the path that you have to take in order to be, you know, a, a leader at Riches. Okay. I will remind everyone we're, we're about ready to finish up. So if you have any last questions, um, please, again, utilize the chat box and we will try to get to as, as many as we can. Just throw comments, questions in there. Uh, we have a couple minutes left. Rachel, you've mentioned I want to go back to the mentors a little bit. Um, obviously, they've pay, played a big role for you. And they're, they're something that's very important, especially at Riches. They really push the, the role of, of, of a mentor. And I hate to be, again, a negative side of this question, but you meet with a mentor and they say something that maybe you weren't aligned with originally, or you were hoping for one answer and they gave you another answer. How do you, how do you adjust your thinking on that? And how do you deal with that? Because I think at some point we all are going to hear something maybe we don't want to hear or something that goes against what we were thinking. Yeah, no, it, you're spot on, Aaron. And that's a really good, um, a really good build to the conversation because it's not always positive and it's not always something that um, you want to hear. And I think like, ironically, that's the best part in having a really solid mentor because they're not just going to sit there and tell you, yep, I think, um, that you, yep, you got everything, everything you have written down. Is perfect. And, <laughs> right. And like, that's the, that's the beauty of it because it's like, okay, we're, we're two different brains. We're two different people. Like we have two different minds. Um, so, and sometimes it's not easy, you know, like you said, it's like, okay, whoa, this is like a complete different direction than what I was thinking or what I had thought. But mm -hmm. I think sometimes just like not even reacting right away, but just internalizing it for yourself and like understanding that, right. It's a different approach. It's a different, um, you know, reasoning for it and kind of weaving that into like your thoughts. Um, and, and that's what I've definitely done. And like, don't get me wrong. I, 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 you know, obviously think and speak very highly of my mentors, but there's been times where I'm like, really? Like <laughs> the whole thing together. And like, I was 100% dead set on it. And you're like, absolutely like cross all of it out. 
Um, but that's like the best part about a mentor because it's like, I'm coming to you with, um, you know, a thought or, um, something I, it's almost like you don't necessarily want your mentor to 100% agree with you because you want them to like question or almost challenge back. You know what I mean? In a, in a positive way, obviously. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's like that, um, kind of criticism that you need to kind of level set and like be real with yourself on, okay, like, literally I talked about my first business plan. Like if I showed that to you guys now, you'd be like, <laughs> right. Um, so it's those, but, but again, like m and helped me with that. My mom helped me with that. Right. People at Riches helped me with that. Like, Whoa, you totally didn't think about X, Y, and Z or, and again, it's your plan, right? So you decide, you take it with a grain of salt. You, you know, kind of interweave that with, um, with your plan and say, Hey, this is really good. I didn't think about that. Right. Um, but, but I think that's like where people get sometimes, and I was the same way with my mentors at first. I'm like, oh, you know, she's going to tell me this is great. And like, that's what I want to hear. So I'm going to, I like her. Right. Sure. And then it's, <laughs> yeah. You get to a point where you're like, well, hold on. Like, what's the point? What's the true point of a mentor then? Right. Right. So I think that that's a great question, Aaron. But yeah, I think, um, and you know, I challenge my team at Riches too. Um, every year, you know, you have a 12 month mentor, you, and actually, um, Aaron, I see a question from, from Tara, it looks like, um, she said, how would you recommend approaching someone to ask them to be your mentor? Yeah, a great follow-up question. Yes. Yeah, um, and thank you for your note. I'm, I'm so glad you, you joined and, and you're enjoying it. Um, but Tara, that's a, that's a fantastic question. And you know, I share with my team a lot at Riches, um, identifying sometimes like where your weaknesses are also help you identify um, a mentor. You know, I talked a little bit just about, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a true like, sales and marketing person through and through. Um, I'm a relationship builder. I'm more of like a, um, you know, from, from the rev side, we call me like the business management part of it, right? I look for collaborations. I look for, um, you know, people to sell to, right? Um, what I'm not good at is the finance, the operations, all of that stuff. So that's kind of my first step, even at Riches, like where I look for a mentor. Um, kind of figuring out like where your capability gaps are in a way or, what you're looking to learn more about. You know, we have a lot of, a lot of people reach out to us saying, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm super interested in starting a business. I'm super interested in, in starting a fitness business. Can you help? Like, absolutely. You know, and sometimes it's just taking that first step of saying, like having your story detailed out, right? Here's, here's kind of what I'm, what I'm doing, what I'm interested in. Here's where I'm like struggling a bit or where I have some questions that I think you could help me with or help clarify or, I just want your perspective, right? A really honest perspective on, does this look right? Um, you know, is what I'm doing um, going down the right path to get me to X, Y, and Z? Um, I think it's really, really important, but I think you'll, you'll be so surprised. People love to be mentors, um, right? And sometimes you go through three or four and you're like, okay, great, that was helpful, but like, and there's differences, right? There's like a professional mentor, there's personal mentors, there's life mentors. It's just all dependent upon what you feel like you, you need or you're looking to get from it. And a lot of times it's, it ends up being a two-way street. You know, they, they actually learn much um, from you too. So don't sell yourself short and thinking that like, you're just going to go to a mentor to, to kind of learn from them or, you know, pick their brain. I think you'll find that you bring them a lot of value too in a, in a different perspective. And Rachel, we're going to end on this question. Kristen also asked a great question. Um, do you think searching for mentors outside your organization can be more beneficial? What's, what's your view on that within or outside the, the organization you work at? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Kristen. And, and thanks for your question. Um, I, think, I think it depends. I think there, it could be um, more beneficial for sure, right? You kind of get like an outside perspective. Um, I find a lot of times with, you know, questions or, or things that I might be struggling with at Riches, um, you know, I, I run past my mom, I run past my, my business partners. Um, so I think that can definitely help. It gives you kind of a, a different perspective and, and not, not a perspective that's so ingrained in like, this is the way we do things, or here's our, um, this kind of box that we have to stay within. It kind of helps you think like, okay, they're not thinking about plant capabilities or, um, you know, the resources or investments. They're thinking really, you know, kind of blue sky holistically. So that definitely helps. Um, I think, you know, um, depending on, you know, if it's a career conversation, it might be helpful to, to, 
have that mentor within your organization. Um, you kind of plant the seed of per perhaps where you want to be and you know what that path might look like um, for you to get there, right? So I think you know it, and I tell this to, to um, my team a lot too. It's sometimes super beneficial to have two mentors, one who's super close to the business, right? Who understands who 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 does understand those kind of capabilities and and that box that we live in, and one who's just blue sky, right? They throw some crazy idea out there and it kind of makes you think, whoa, right? What if we did have the resources? What if we did have the investments to do that? What could that look like? So I think, um, you know, it, it could go both ways depending on what you're looking for, but absolutely, you know, outside of, of the organization is some, sometimes the best way to go. Well, believe it or not, we are at 8.55 and I feel like this hour has flown by. So Rachel, thank you, thank you very, very much for, for doing this for us. Um, I don't think we could have picked a better first presenter and I'm certainly inspired. So if, if anything, that's, I got that. Um, I believe I'm gonna turn it back over to Sarah now for some final thoughts. Um, and I would encourage, oh, and she has a visitor. And <laughs> I would encourage anyone, um, if you do have questions, to please, again, put in the chat or email Michelle um, and we can, we can get them over to Rachel and get you answers. And I think on behalf of all of us, Rachel, thank you so much. That was, that was amazing. And I will, I will shut up now and let Sarah finish us off. <laughs> thank you, Aaron. And thank you, Rachel. That really was inspiring. Um, I definitely am motivated to like re-evaluate, you know, some of the directions I'm heading in right now. So, so thank you for that. Um, you know, just to kind of, again, reiterate what, what Aaron said, uh, if you have any questions, get them over, uh, get them over to us. You can put them in the chat box now, and then we'll make sure that you, uh, get answers later. And then just for the future, um, we are planning on hosting a series of bi-monthly, um, uh, executive breakfast like this. So stay tuned for announcement for the September speaker. And uh, if you'd like to learn more about Young at Heart, you can reach out to the American Heart Association director, that's Michelle Mason, and she'll be happy to tell you more about the program. And I hope you all consider joining us. So we've got a lot of really fun um, events in store for members this year that we're still kind of hashing out. So um, open to new ideas and new perspectives. So looking forward to meeting new people. Um, and thank you again for joining us. I hope everyone has a wonderful week.